بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. Uh, first of all, to honor those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored is part of the adab of what we learn from this deen. So mashallah, all of the great ulama that are here, the scholars, the teachers of students and the students of knowledge that are here, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Nafa'allahu bikum. May Allah continue to benefit through you and elevate you. The pioneers that are here that have built these facilities and these organizations and these institutes that have come together. May Allah reward all of the organizers. May Allah reward the volunteers. Say Ameen. Make sure that you thank the volunteers. Y'all have been giving round of applause like every five seconds here. That's the problem with Sheikh Abdullah, mashallah. He's, he's making you give a round of applause for your round of applause. Like, but make sure you thank the volunteers on your way out as well. And mashallah, indeed, it is a blessed gathering. Uh, SubhanAllah, when the brother was saying that it feels like COVID's over, uh, COVID's been over in Texas for two years. So this is pretty common in Texas, but I recognize the significance here in Canada, alhamdulillah. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this to be an accepted gathering from us all. Allahumma ameen. The topic that I have is about the value of the mu'min, the value of the believer in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want to take a step back and analyze this purely through the Qur'an with the few moments that I have. When you talk about the value of the believer, the mu'min in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are two levels to that discussion. The hurma, the sanctity of the believer, and the manzil, the station of the believer. They are related, but they're not exactly the same thing. Now when we talk about the sanctity of human life, in the sense of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put so much emphasis in the Qur'an and we find in the sunnah of our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa an emphasis on not taking a life or harming someone without just cause. That is because of the rights that Allah azza wa has assigned to everything and everyone around us. But then you talk about the sanctity of the believer, the value the believer holds in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa says, after... These many verses in Surah Al-Furqan, Ibadur Rahman, the verses about the servants of the Most Merciful, where we recite the qualities of the servants of the Most Merciful. قُلْ مَا يَعْبَأُ بِكُمْ رَبِّي لَوْلَا دُعَاءُكُمْ أَيْ لَوْلَا إِمَانُكُمْ Say, what value do you have in the sight of your Lord except for your dua, except for your supplication? Abdullah ibn Abbas anhuma said, meaning your iman, your faith, is what gives you value in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sanctity in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that hurma that is established for the believer, that sanctity is a baseline sanctity the scholars mention. And I want you to think about the moment. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam standing in front of the Kaaba on the 10th of the Hijjah in his only Hajj after his pilgrimage or after his Hijrah to al Madinah. Hajjatul Wada'a, the farewell Hajj, and the Prophet وسلم, looking at the Kaaba and addressing the Kaaba, and he's not really addressing the Kaaba, he's addressing the people that hear him addressing the Kaaba. How sacred are you? And I'm going to paraphrase the hadith for the sake of time. How sacred are you? How beautiful are you? How pure are you? But the sanctity, the hurma, the sanctity of the believer is greater in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than you. Their honor, their property, their lives. SubhanAllah, can you imagine a person meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment with the crime of Hadm al Kaaba, of destroying the Kaaba? How many people will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the crime of destroying the honor of a believer, of harming people with their tongue? Because this tongue breaks down people worse than what would happen if someone was to physically break down the Kaaba. And we will be accountable. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that. Allahumma ameen. That's the baseline. That's not the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not the muhsin, the person who excels. That's just the mu'min, the sanctity of the believer in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we talk about Palestine, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liberate al-Aqsa, Allahumma ameen. The sanctity of our mother who is being kneed in the face by a settler scumbag on her way to Masjid al-Aqsa and hanging on, holding on to her mushaf 
holding on to her dhikr, the sanctity of our uncle, the sanctity of our father, the sanctity of our brother, our sister, the sanctity of our child in Al-Aqsa under the boots of occupation is greater than the sanctity of Al-Aqsa itself, the sanctity of a believer. And as much as a person increases in Iman, in faith, then that sanctity increases in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Until it reaches, مَنْ عَادَ لِي وَلِيَّ فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ Whoever takes a wali of mine, someone who is very beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a friend of Allah, may Allah make us amongst them. When you say, وَتَوَلَّنِي فِي مَنْ تَوَلَّيْتِ You're asking Allah for it in your witr. Take me as a wali. Take me as a friend of yours, O oh Allah. تَوَلَّنِي فِي مَنْ تَوَلَّيْتِ مَنْ عَادَ لِي وَلِيَّ If someone takes a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an enemy, فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ Allah wages a war against that person. May Allah make us amongst those on whose behalf he wages war, not those upon whom he wages war. Allahumma ameen. The awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what happens when you fill yourself only by what Allah Azza wa Jal allows you to be filled with of iman, and your manzil, your station, elevates with him, parallel to the more iman, the more faith that is being developed in your heart, is that there is an outcome in the way that you see Allah, in the way that you see yourself, in the way that you see your world, in the way that you see your circumstances, in the way that you see the past, in the way that you see the present and the future. And I'm going to try to break that all down in 15 minutes, inshallah ta'ala. So hear me out for a moment, and we'll take a journey through the Qur'an, and it starts with the Khalil of Allah, Ibrahim alayhi salam. The friend of God, the friend of Allah, Ibrahim alayhi salam. When he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in private, not in public, Rabbi, arini kayfa tuhyi al-mawta. My Lord, will you show me how you give life to the dead? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do you not believe? Do you not have iman already? Of course I believe, but that my heart may be put, may be put at ease. Ya Allah, I am challenging these people, idol worshippers, tyrants, all of these people with the hujjah, with the proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's been given to me. But Ya Allah, I'm not asking you, can you give life to the dead the way that the idolaters do? I'm asking you to show me, give me a glimpse of Allah, of how you give life to the dead. And Allah says, do you not believe? Of course I believe. Bala, walakin inna qalbi. But let my heart be put at ease. And as Ibn Abbas anhu says, so that I can have ziyadatul iman, an increase of iman upon iman. Grow my faith. Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah is khalil. Let my iman grow. And then you know if you are watching someone that is beloved to you doing something on your behalf and they didn't know that you saw that or that you heard about that. Let's take a journey through the Quran for a moment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِي حَجَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ فِي رَبِّهِ أَنْ آتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْمُلْكِ Did you not see the person? Nimrud, the tyrant. Now Allah is watching his friend, his loved one, Ibrahim alayhi salam, confronting Nimrud, the tyrant. And he's challenging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his name is not even worthy of being mentioned. Man who thought so highly of himself. He's simply, The one who challenged Ibrahim in regards to his Lord, that he claimed sovereignty. Ibrahim alayhi salam says to him, رَبِّيَ الَّذِي يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتِ قَالَ أَنَا أُحْيِي وَأُمِيتِ Ibrahim salam says, my Lord is the one who gives life and gives death. He said, I give life and I give death. The mu'min, the believer, Ibrahim salam, standing in front of this tyrant who is so empty on the inside. You know, they say tyrants try to overcompensate with ridiculous antics. They try to do all sorts of things to overcompensate for the emptiness and insecurity they feel on the inside. So what does this powerful man do? A cowardly thing. He brings a man 
who was destined to be killed, or who was supposed to be executed, he says, you go free. Then he brings a completely innocent man, and he kills him. So see, I give life, and I give death. قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْتِي بِالشَّمْسِ مِنَ الْمَشْرِقِ فَأْتِي بِهَا مِنَ الْمَغْرِبِ Ibrahim salam says, Allah brings the sun from the east, so bring it from the west. فَبُهِتَ الَّذِي كَفَرُ And he was completely, completely baffled, lost, humiliated, disgraced. وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ And Allah does not guide the transgressors. Here you have, imagine, Allah says, أَلَمْ تَرَى Did you see? Allah Azza wa Jal is watching his friend Ibrahim السلام, who in private would ask him, show me, show me how you give life to the dead. And Allah Azza wa Jal confirms that and gives Ibrahim السلام, an experiment to show him how he gives life to the dead. But now Ibrahim السلام, is challenging this tyrant. And Ibrahim السلام, tells him, go ahead and alternate the night and the day the way that you claim. And that man was completely left empty. I have no way to compensate for this weakness that I have. And Ibrahim السلام, grew in his maqam with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He grew in his station with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with every one of these incidents that we read about our father Ibrahim السلام, he's growing in his station. Now, go to Ali Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِنْ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say, O oh my Lord, you give sovereignty to whom you will, and you take it away from whom you will. And you honor whom you will, and you disgrace whom you will. In your hand is all good. Verily, you have power over all things. SubhanAllah. This reality, we're going to do a little Quran 30 for 30 here, all right? Early Madani reality, people scoffed at the Prophet ﷺ when he said, One day, this light of mine is not just going to reach Mecca, Medina, it's going to reach the Romans and the Persians. It is going to reach the entire world and the keys of all of those kingdoms will be given to the Ummah of Muhammad wasallam. And they scoffed at him, they mocked him. Who do you think you are? And the Prophet وسلم, with full faith, with full Iman, doesn't stutter when he talks to Suraq ibn Malik عنه, and tells him about the days to come. Doesn't show any hesitation or lack of confidence when he says that one day this will come to pass. And some of the ulama, they say in an added richness to this with the mockery, is that some of them said, why did Allah make you a prophet? He could have made us a prophet. Whether that was the tribes in Medina from the people of the book that thought that the prophet should be from Bani Israel, you don't get to choose that. Or whether it was Abu Jahl and the people, the, the two mighty men of Ta'if who said, why you? Allah could have given it to, to us instead. If Allah is distributing his mulk, meaning his nubuwa, why not us? Should have given it to us instead. And Allah tells the Prophet وسلم, and the believers by extension, قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكَ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكَ تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ You give it to whom you what? You take it away from whom you want. تُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ You're the one who gives honor. You're the one who disgraces. بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ تُولِجُ اللَّيْلَ فِي النَّهَارِ وَتُولِجُ النَّهَارَ فِي اللَّيْلِ What did Ibrahim a.s. challenge Nimrud with? Alternate the night and the day. Here, we say, Oh Allah, you alternate night and day. وَتُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَتُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَتَرْزُقُ مَنْ تَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ What was the initial challenge? You give life to the dead, and you give death to the living. You are the one who controls life and death, 
You are the one who controls night and day. And that is the proof by which the believer continues to connect themselves to the giver of all things, and the giver of all things gives relative to iman, relative to the increase of faith. Because the more iman you have, the more you view Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as being greater and being the giver and the bestower, the more you humble yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you humble yourself to Allah, the more He honors you, and the more that everything around you, as destabilized and destabilizing as it may seem, starts to freeze. Now subhanAllah, you move to the end of Surah Ali Imran, and you have another Madani reality, the post-Uhud reality. You know, I've said this many times that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you only took his seerah, you could author every single leadership book in the world about the qualities of a leader. Post-Uhud is a pivotal moment. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lost some very close people to him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam almost lost his own life. And people fled Uhud. Noble people made a mistake. They fled Uhud. They weren't the hypocrites. The hypocrites already turned their back before Uhud even started on the Prophet ﷺ. These were believers in a moment of weakness. And at that moment, Rasulullah ﷺ, you know what he could have done? You know what a tyrant would have done? A tyrant would have made all of those that fled Uhud wear a certain type of garment for a week. Lash them in public. Humiliate them. Say, I lost Hamza because of you. I lost Mus'ab because of you. I lost Abdullah ibn Jahsh because of you. Is that what happens? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them. Not only that, in a post-Uhud reality, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ So beautiful. وَلَا تَهِنُوا Don't weaken. Sheikh Mustafa is here. I'm like afraid to translate Quran right now. So read the clear Quran for proper translations. And go to the Tartil app for, uh, to find your, the, place, the place that I'm reciting. That's two plugs in one. Alhamdulillah, I'm done. I'll collect from both of you afterwards. Your eyes, of course. Um, this verse in a post-Uhud reality, so profound. وَلَا تَهِنُوا Do not weaken. And tahinu refers to the physical manifestation of power and strength and refers more to that which is to come. Like there's still a lot more to come here. You still have a lot, of, a lot ahead of you. When Zakariya Islam says, I've withered away on the inside, my bones have weakened. Do not weaken. Do not become defeated. And don't grieve over the past. The sadness that you feel in the heart, the guilt, the, you know, the second guessing. Kalimat lo, if I would have done this and I would have done that, Hamza would still be alive, Mus'ab would still be alive. You know, I come from a country where we have, and, and I'm not joking here, I mean being real, it is one of the, the most disgraceful elements of a society. More mass shootings than days in the year. And oftentimes you read the st st statistics on survivor's guilt. Survivor's guilt. People that will actually kill themselves. There are some mass shootings where you have more suicides in the aftermath of the shooting by the survivors than the actual casualties of the shooting. Imagine the survivor's guilt in Uhud. Imagine, like, I saw Hamza radiallahu anhu fall. I saw Mus'ab fall. I saw the best people fall. And Allah says, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَحْلَوْنَ You are the highest. You are the best community. And don't be demoralized and paralyzed for what is to come, nor Paralyze yourself with grief over that which has passed. You are the highest. You are the best community. You are the most beloved community to Allah. In kuntum mu'minin. So long as you are believers. So long as you are believers. Subhanallah. Our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that there is victory in defeat so long as belief was not lost. 
And that's why in that moment, the mockery of the mushrikeen, of the disbelievers, when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma are standing back there in Uhud, beat up, battered, bloodied, and they're yelling out, and they're claiming victory, because this was the only sense of victory they could possibly have, because their reality is so empty, it's restricted to this life. They were not there for al lat or Al-Uzza or Hubal, like they claim. They weren't there for their idols. They were there because their egos were bruised and they worshipped their egos and their egos were hurt after Badr. That's why they were there. Their only victory happens in this life because they didn't even believe in an afterlife. So what an empty existence they actually had. Nothing to look forward to. Nothing to fulfill them. And so the only way they could fill that emptiness and that insecurity was through material victories and wins. And so when they call out for victory, what's the answer? You guys don't get it. Our dead are in paradise. Your dead are in hellfire. You're celebrating here this victory of yours. Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu has already seen his place in Jannah with the first strike, Sayyid al-Shuhada. Mus'ab radiallahu ta'ala anhu is already seeing al-Jannah. The Shuhada are already living a new reality, and you're sitting here claiming victory. Our dead are in paradise. Your dead are in the fire. Wait a minute, that's not the answer we were seeking. So let's try the chants about our idols. You guys don't get it. Allahu mawlana. Wala mawla lakum. Allah is our protector. You have no protector. You know what we learned there? They weren't defeated. They were victorious because they didn't lose iman. They lost lives. They lost wealth. They lost security. They had to rebuild quite a bit to get themselves ready for the next phase. But wala tahinu wala tahzanu wa antumul a'launa in kuntum mu'mineen. You are the highest community in the sight of God so long as you remain people of iman, so long as you have belief. Meaning what? If you win, but you lose your iman, then you're actually low in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have lost. And this is an admonishment to our community. That when you seek material gains and advancements as a minority community, don't lose your iman in the process. That's not victory. That's not victory. That's not advancement. That's not progress. Progress is to, is to make progress with your faith intact and to start to transform society around you with your faith. Not to be transformed by your society with your faith withering away. No material progress is going to fill that emptiness or fill that status gap with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Progress is with faith. Because sanctity is with faith. Because elevation is with faith. And as long as that faith is intact and grows, then we are making progress on the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are being elevated. There are no shortcuts to being a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are no shortcuts to advancement. You have to take the long road, the difficult road, and Allah will make it easy for you because the reward will be worth the struggle. So keep at it. And you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? Surah Al-Buruj. SubhanAllah. Ashab Al-Ukhdud. You know, the humiliation of the Meccans when the Prophet وسلم, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma could still have that clarity. In the midst of all of that, not even a moment of clarity was lost to have that clarity in the midst of that. By the way, that clarity exists in Gaza. Let me tell you something. People here will have a faith crisis talking about what's happening to the people of Gaza. The people of Gaza are increasing in their iman because of what's happening to the people of Gaza. I was talking to a distant cousin of mine, subhanAllah, who was telling me how, you know, they were anticipating after this uh, racist uh, flag march that they had on Jerusalem, they were hoping for some sort of a skirmish so they could uh, change the tune, change the narrative from the murder, the shameless murder of Shireen Abu Akla. So they were hoping for something. They were hoping to start a both sides war so that they could provoke the American government and the Canadian government. Your government is just as terrible as our government when it comes to Palestine. They equally stink. <laughs> so he was saying, 
The only concern they, they have when the airstrikes come and the bombings come is how they're going to get to Fajr the next day. These people don't delay a salah. They don't delay a wedding. They just put them all together. Something we should probably try in the West as well. You know, instead of the individual expensive weddings. That they are growing in their faith. They're not losing. لا تزال طائفة من أمتي منصورين لا يضرهم من خذلهم. This there is a group of people from my ummah. They're always supported. They are not. They are not saddened. They are not harmed by those who turn their backs on them because they are not turning to the world for help. They're turning to Allah subhanahu wa taala for victory and elevation. There's a quality inside of them. Irtifa'ul iman, irtifa'ul manzil, the elevation of faith, the elevation of a station. And so they see themselves as making progress and they're coming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have not withered, so why are you withering? They are not in crisis, why are you in crisis for them? They're telling you to thabbatu. They're telling you to have thabbat, to have firmness with them. They're telling you we're okay because we are coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in Surah Al-Buruj? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَتَنُوا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَتُوبُوا فَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمَ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ الْحَرِيقَ Allah Azza wa Jal says, those who put the believers, look at the wasf, look at the characteristic that Allah is drawing upon. Those who put the believers to trial and did not repent, will have a grievous punishment ahead of them. No material victory can put off the eternal torment that awaits them. So those who put the believers to test, to trial, Ashab al-Ukhdud, a group of innocent people thrown into a ditch and lit on fire. ثُمَّ لَمْ يَتُوبُوا And they don't repent. So Allah is opening the door to them to repent. فَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمْ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ الْحَرِيقُ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Those who believe and work deeds of righteousness have paradise beneath which rivers flow. ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْكَبِيرِ That is the great success. Because their iman was not burned in that fire. Therefore, the reward for their iman is preserved. Those people that put them to torment did not have the quality of faith that guarantees them that safety and that security and that elevation and that station with their Lord. It's iman that raises you up. It's faith that raises you up. And the more that your faith rises, the more that everything in the world starts to make sense. I end with two things in this regard. The Prophet ﷺ told us that there would come a time that a person would wake up in the morning, a mu'min, a believer, and they go to sleep at night without belief, a disbeliever. And vice versa, you go to sleep a believer, you wake up a disbeliever. And so iman is there sometimes and it's not there sometimes. That's not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is playing with our hearts. That's not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is oppressing us or wronging us. That's when your iman becomes so flimsy due to you conditioning your faith upon material things. I had a good day at work, I'm going to sleep on Alhamdulillah. I had a bad day at work, I'm going to sleep with I don't know if God exists. I mean, this is the, this is the variation, right? You condition your iman upon material success, whereas the Messenger وسلم, taught you to believe in Allah without condition, and as a reward for believing in Allah without condition, your condition would perpetually improve until you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in eternal bliss. That's the, the deal. The deal in Medina with the Messenger وسلم, and the Ansar was what? Even though the Prophet وسلم, was talking about Rome and Persia and Islam spreading throughout the world, the Prophet وسلم, did not say to the Ansar, I'm going to turn Medina or I'm going to turn Yathrib into a world class city. I'm going to build you an airport, and maybe one day a clock tower here too. You know, all types, of, all types of worldly promises. All of these people are going to come to you. Medina is going to have hotels and gardens. Wait till you... None of that. 
What does he promise them? In exchange for Imam, Jannah, paradise. The other stuff is secondary. The other stuff is bonus. The other stuff is bonus. Dear brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, I wasn't going to, I've never mentioned this in a public lecture, even though I took permission from the family. One of the uh, prisoners of the Holy Land Foundation, the HLF5, that was shut down in the United States, one of the five HLF5 prisoners, I was performing the nikah of his son a few months ago. And they were playing a message from prison. One of the things about the United, the U.S. prison system is they seek to dehumanize you in every single way possible to a point that you can't play the message of a man without every few seconds it stopping and saying, this is a collect call from this prison. This is a call from this prison. You imagine playing on the loudspeakers while people are dressed up nicely and people are celebrating a beautiful moment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with each other, and they're playing the message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free those who are unjustly imprisoned. Everyone say, Ameen. May Allah free those who are unjustly imprisoned. Everyone say, Ameen. They're playing his message, and he's talking to his son. He's giving his son a nasiha. And this is a man in prison now for almost two decades for a crime he didn't commit. And he says to his son over that call, He says, learn to compromise in everything except your deen. Wallahi, he said that sentence. I said, subhanAllah, a man from prison. And he says, learn to compromise in everything except for your deen. Learn to be a humble, easygoing person. Compromise with your ego. Compromise with your day. Compromise with the harms and the, the things that the world presents towards you. But don't compromise your iman. That was the dua of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And I want you all to remember it. Allahumma inni as'aluka imanan la yartad. Allahumma inni as'aluka imanan la yartad. Allahumma inni as'aluka imanan la yartad. Wa na'eeman la yanfad. Wa na'eeman la yanfad. Wa na'eeman la yanfad. Wa murafaqata nabiyika Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi a'la jannati al-khud. Wa murafaqata Nabiyika Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi a'la jannati al-khuld. O oh Allah, I ask you for faith that does, not, that does not leave. Faith that does not escape me. I ask you for faith that stays with me. Na'eeman la yanfad. Blessings that don't cut off, that don't expire. And I ask you for the companionship of your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest level of Jannat al-Firdaus. Ameen. Say Ameen. Memorize the dua. It was the dua of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu for which the Prophet وسلم, said Ameen when he said it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Iman and Kamila, for full faith, Yaqeen and Sadiqa, for true certainty, and for Amal and Mutaqabbala, for accepted deeds. Allahumma Ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, I am, I'm done now, but uh, I had the, the blessing of meeting a beautiful brother um, backstage, Alhamdulillah. And by the way, I'll tell you, abshiru. It's glad tidings for everyone. I have never seen more people embracing Islam than I have in the last two years. I've never seen that in my life. Alhamdulillah. So I met um, Mark backstage. And Mark, inshallah ta'ala, is going to come up and take his shahada. So I'm going to ask Mark to come to the stage. I want you to repeat after me. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan rasul Allah. I bear witness that there is only one God and that Muhammad is his final messenger. Takbir.
Allah bless you. Please make dua for Mark. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you firm. May Allah keep faith strong in your heart. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate you until you reach the position of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in paradise. And may Allah join us with you. Everyone say ameen. Jazakumullah khairan wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.